My name is Caroline Tompkins, President and CEO of FIT, and it is my absolute pleasure to introduce, as part of our thought leadership initiatives, this new video series hosted by Peter Hall. Peter has long been an influential voice in the international business community. He served as Vice President and Chief Economist at Export Development Canada for over a decade and continues as the CEO of Econosphere Inc. to share his expert understanding of the world economy, forecasts, and what it all means for today's exporters. We are thrilled to have him share his insights with the FIT community in this series. In this first video, Peter is starting the series with his view of the world under the provocative title, Is Forecasting Passé? I don't know about you, but I'm eager to hear what he has to say and what exporters can expect in this world of mega shifts. Hi, I'm Peter Hall, CEO of Econosphere Inc. and delighted to be coming to the ever-growing Forum for International Trade Training Community with a series of monthly briefings on the economy and the evolving geopolitical situation. I've made numerous presentations to fit audiences over the years as Chief Economist of Export Development Canada, and I am looking forward very much to continuing my strong connection to FIT with these briefings. Thank you, Caroline, for the invitation to do this. I do hope that all who watch these videos find them useful, and as always, I welcome your questions and feedback. Well, it's probably best for me to start with how I see this great big world. Chaos is a big theme these days. It appears in books, movies, high-level economic and political discussions, and it's come to permeate our view of things. Whether it's climate change, technological change, deglobalization, terrorism, populism, pandemics, demographic change, misinformation, corporate ethical issues, intellectual property, artificial intelligence, or the host of other mega shifts I've left off the list. Each individual issue is daunting on its own. Collectively, they are something of a nightmare. Now, the shock, persistence, and randomness of these issues has led many to conclude that it's not really possible to see the future, that the models of the past are broken. That's probably true if everything has changed, but everything hasn't changed. Funny, but with all the talk of change, we seem to have forgotten that some key principal things have not changed. One of those is the business cycle. We still talk about its four phases, growth, peak, recession, and recovery. All of these terms are still in our business vocabulary and still active in reality. Now, what's confusing about today's business cycle is that it doesn't seem to be following the same cadence as in the past. In recent history, we could count on a recession happening roughly every 10 years. However, dating back to the early 1980s, the world has undergone significant positive shocks that have increased our collective capacity as a world to grow. Things like computing power, telecommunications, the rise of emerging markets, globalization, and myriad related factors and applications. Well, these have revolutionized and set whole new limits to our growth potential. Viewed through this lens, our world actually makes a whole lot more sense. Suddenly, we have a bigger explanation for the global financial and economic crisis of 2008 and the monster economic bubble that preceded it. Same for the unending sluggish growth that followed it. And now the economy's apparent resilience. Even the run-up in inflation and the resulting surge of interest rates, while painful, actually makes sense. This way of looking at things doesn't answer all of our burning questions about the current chaos but it does give enough context to do a decent forecast. For instance, many foresee a near-term recession. Most forecasters were in that camp at the beginning of 2023. And within weeks, they all abandoned that view. But they're now convinced it's coming next year. We should believe them this time, right? Why were so many so wrong this year? Sure, there are some signs, like the impossibly low unemployment rate, that we're actually in the late stages of the cycle. But it's really hard to argue that in the big driver economies, there's clear evidence of pre-recession excesses. In fact, there's ample evidence of the exact opposite, a massive anti-bubble of pent-up demand. Now, if you don't agree, you're in very good company. 
But try these arguments on for size. First, the COVID-19 policy-induced recession simply deferred a lot of intended spending. And the money is there for it, from incomes that were just banked to paid out but unspent stimulus money. Second, prolonged sluggish growth created a huge groundswell of pre-pandemic pent-up spending. So before the pandemic ever occurred, there was this pent-up wall of spending. Now, thirdly, at the same time, Americans vastly reduced their personal debt levels. Fourth, the 2008 housing disaster, most evident in the U.S. market, brought chronic underbuilding that created a huge supply-demand gap that will still take years to fill. In the U.S. and Europe, housing is on the up and up. No wonder the Fed is finding the inflation battle hard. Actually, pent-up demand is perhaps the greatest assurance that rate hikes, if done well, can indeed generate a soft landing. Growth will doubtless be slower, but based on fundamentals, recession should not be a foregone conclusion. Looks like forecasts for 2024 are in for some upward adjustment too. So, ditto for Canada? Sadly, no. Soaring consumer debt and poor housing fundamentals will not respond well to aggressive interest rate hikes. This, together with higher consumer prices, will ensure that Canadian consumers are tighter with their cash. Avoiding a significant domestic recession will be very difficult for Canada to do. This time around, however, Canada's exporters will get a free pass. The relative strength of our key trading partners will likely shift business interest more to an export focus, by extension, heating up demand for international trade expertise. For the next few years, it's quite likely that fit, trained, and certified trade professionals will be in high demand and that FIT's services will be eagerly sought. Not only will exports partly offset the domestic malaise, but that same domestic weakness could well free up labor and plant capacity for the export sector. It's actually a good moment to keep an eye open for talent that's currently being shed in, for example, the high-tech, financial services, and skilled trade firms that primarily serve the internal economy. It's also a good time to be on the lookout for strategic investment plays. Here's the deal. Forecasting is alive and well if the impact of structural changes is properly understood. Data and cyclical fundamentals together show that the global economy is stronger than news reports have indicated. This will help it to absorb higher interest rates without drastic fallout and to continue growing for a number of years to come. To do this successfully, more capacity will be needed to deal with rising demand. That will be good for Canadian exports, Canadian business investment, and as such suggests that the FIT family will be busy and in high demand. Well, until next month's issue, I'm Peter Hall.